Good morning, Pastor Mark Driscoll here for our morning devotions. Glad that you're with me this morning to spend some time in the Word of the Lord. <clears throat> if you want to look at more devotions, you can always go to my YouTube channel. Uh, you can go to my Prepare the Way uh, Facebook site or just here live on my home screen. Um, there's a lot of different options. I try to put a lot of stuff out there. So if people want to do Bible study, if they want to watch things, I know there's a, I just received word that there's a small group that's using one of the Bible studies and, and they meet together. And that's kind of exciting to see. I love to see the word of the Lord spreading out throughout all the earth. And, you know, I, I think that's a privilege. It's an honor to be able to share God's word. And so all of us should be about the business of sharing his word in whatever way we're able to do it. Let me pray with you and let's get started. Father, thank you for your love and grace. Thank you, Lord, for your presence, for your care. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for us and rose again. Thank you that you've saved us from our sins. Thank you, Lord, that you're coming again. Lord, in these days, we have a lot of questions, a lot of hopes and fears. But, Lord, you're greater than all of that. We just need to rise up and spend time with you and we need to focus on you trust in your power lord i pray for every person that's watching right now that whatever their needs whatever their burdens lord god they would find hope and strength in you so lord i pray now give me the words to speak in jesus name amen i want to read to you from exodus uh, the book of exodus second book in the bible it tells the story of the children of Israel being rescued from their bondage to slavery in Egypt. And then it talks about how they enter into the desert on their way toward the promised land. And, and uh, it talks about the building of the tabernacle and, and the Ark of the Covenant and all of these things that went into their formation as they were learning what it means to be the people of God. I think that's such a great picture of us. I know what we're doing. We've been delivered from sin and death by Jesus. And if you if you don't know Jesus, he's the only way to be set free from the power of sin, the power and fear of death, uh, the separation from God. Uh, he's the only way. And as you do, he's the deliverer who brings us out of our Egypt. But then we have to go through sometimes a place in the desert of learning how to listen to God. That's what they did. Forty years in the desert, they learned how to listen to God. And they learned how to worship. They learned how to be obedient. They learned how to trust in God. <clears throat> and so we're learning that, aren't we? As we walk through this wilderness of this life, we're learning how to hear what God has to say, how to be the people of God, that royal priesthood, that holy nation that we're called to be. We're learning how to do that. And so how's your learning going today? How's your training going today? I want to read to you from Exodus 33 about something I think is very important in helping us grow. Uh, it's key, but it's often neglected. And starting in verse 7, it says, Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far from the camp. And he called it the tent of meeting. Now this was not the same as the tabernacle that was in the midst of the camp. This was a tent that he would set up outside of the camp. And everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. This was a place Moses intentionally put it away from the camp, away from the crowd, away from the distractions, away from the people, so you could get alone with God and meet with God. That was the purpose of that tent. And then it says, whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise up and each would stand at his tent door and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. Now, this is where, where I felt like the word of the Lord came to me this morning. I was reading this and this struck me. Moses would get up every day and go into that tent, that holy spot, that place of getting away and getting alone with God. And the people out of respect, admiration, perhaps curiosity, anticipation, would rise up and stand as he went in. And that, that was a kind of a, in one level, that's a great thing. They're showing great respect to Moses as he went into the holy place. They're showing great uh, admiration for him. 
as their leader, they expected, oh, there goes our man of God going into the holy place. And they would stand. And I think there's something beautiful about that. But here's the thing that struck me. Too many of us are standing while somebody else walks into the holy place. Too many of us are saying, you know, I really respect those other people that go into the holy place. We, we, we have respect for our pastor to, and expect our pastor to spend time in the meeting place with God. We expect our pastors and our preachers, our teachers, to be the, that person who spends great time with God. But that tent wasn't just for Moses. It was the tent of meeting that he set up for anybody who needs to seek the Lord. And what struck me was that they would rise up and watch him do it, but we don't have any evidence that they went into the tent of meeting. It wasn't made just for Moses. The tent of meeting was made for anybody seeking God. And, I, and here's where it struck me today. I felt like the Lord was saying, my people need to stop rising up and start entering in. Let me say it again. We need to stop rising up and start entering in. And here's my point. Many of us spend our whole Christian life, we've gotten saved, we've believed on the Lord Jesus, but then we're so busy with life that we don't really take time to spend with God. But we admire those who do. We'll read the books of the great people, John Wesley and Charles Spurgeon and, and all the people who were known for their prayer life and known for their devotion to God. We have great reverence for our leaders today who will spend time with God. And we, we love to go on YouTube and, and watch somebody else talk about what they heard from God. We love to, to, to hear what somebody else's experience with God has been. And when we need a word from the Lord, instead of seeking it for ourselves, we'll go and look for somebody else and say, hey, could you give me a word from God? And as much as I appreciate when people do give a word from the Lord, I hope I'm giving you one today. God wants you in the tent, my friend. That tent's not just for Moses. That tent is for you. God doesn't call just Moses to go into the tent while you stand and watch and admire. God didn't call you to admire somebody else's relationship with God. He wants you in the tent. It says that Moses, I love how it would say, Moses would go into the tent and he would talk with God as a man talks face to face with his friend. You know, there's another thing you notice in this, in this same passage. Let me read the rest of it. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent, and the Lord would speak with Moses. And when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise up and worship, eat at, each at his tent door. That's great. They would worship at their tent. But God's calling them into the cloud. He's calling them into his presence. And, and we see that in many other places. When God called the people up to the mountain and they said, Moses, don't. No, no, no. You go to the mountain for us. We might die. You go instead. They're happy for Moses to go at peril of his own life into the presence of God. But they didn't want the presence for themselves. And yet God had said from the beginning, I want you to be a holy people, a nation of priests. I want you to be my private possession. I want you to be people that I speak to. God invited them into his presence. He set up the tent of meeting to invite them into his presence. And they just weren't willing. They'd worship in their tent. They'd worship in their place. But they wouldn't come to the holy place. Let me make another application. There's a lot of people today that will worship at their own tent. In other words, on Sunday morning, they'll stay at their own house. They'll turn on the YouTube. They'll turn up the music. And they'll say, you know, I can do church at my house. I don't need to gather with those other people. I can do my thing at my house. Now, it may be that you've been hurt. Maybe you've been disappointed. Maybe you've just had a disagreement. And, and so you, you don't go with the people of God anymore. But that's a contradiction of what God has called us to. He hasn't called us to be a bunch of individuals worshiping at our own tent. He calls us into the holy place together with his people. And I know, friend, it's difficult sometimes, isn't it? Sometimes you get hurt. Sometimes you get misunderstood. Sometimes you have disagreements. 
But God never calls us to abandon our fellow brothers and sisters and just have our own little thing. Now, there are moments of solitude, absolutely. There are moments of private time in the desert, absolutely. But God calls us to worship him as his holy people. Moses wanted that tent filled with people seeking God. But he would go and one other person would go. I love how it would say, at the last verse, verse 11, it says, And his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man would not depart from the tent. There was that guy sitting in the corner somewhere of the tent of meeting, and he just couldn't bring himself to leave. Moses would later, I mean, Joshua would later become the leader of Israel. He would succeed Moses. But right now, he's spending time in the holy place. He's spending time. Here's another thought. You might be that Joshua. Right now, Joshua was just the second in command. He wasn't the leader yet. But what did he do? He didn't look for a stage. He didn't look for a platform. He looked for the holy place. I believe that God is looking for people today who are more interested in the holy place, the secret place, than in the public spot. We've got too many preachers and too many prophets, too many so-called apostles who want the stage. They're looking for a platform. Give me a title. Give me a platform. Give me a calling. Give me something I can do in front of people. And God's saying, spend some time in the secret place. Get into the tent of meeting. Don't leave it. I love how Joshua wouldn't leave. He wanted the presence of God more than he wanted anything else. You know, he could have spent a lot of time trying to work his way into power. But instead, he wanted to work his way into the presence. Oh, friend, if that won't teach, I don't know what does. Today, we've got too many people who want to work their way into power instead of working their way into presence. You know what I'd like to see leading our country since we're talking about elections? I'd like to see somebody who loves the secret place more than the public place. Wouldn't you? I'd like to see somebody who's got a real heart for God that really goes, oh, can we pray that one day God will give us leaders who love the secret place more than the public place? Give us preachers who love the secret place more than the platform. Give us people who, who really seek after the heart of God. This challenges me. I need to stay in the tent of meeting. I need to stay in the secret place. I don't need to be off of my own little tent trying to do my own little thing. And I don't need to be looking for a way to show off who I am. I need to get in the quiet place, the secret place of God. And I need to go after him and spend time with him with all my heart. And friend, I want to challenge you today. He, he doesn't want you just to stand up and watch somebody else go after God. He wants you going after God. You know, don't go on to, online. You know, I preach online because this is what I feel God calling me to do. But let me tell you something. If you need a word from God, don't go scrolling in your Facebook to get a word from God. Now, if God leads you to do a devotion with me or with somebody else, that's fine. If that helps feed you, that's fine. But let me tell you something. You know what he wants you to do? He wants you to spend some time in the secret place. He wants to give you a word straight from heaven. He wants to give it to you. There's a psalm that says, May the Lord send you help from the sanctuary. I love that. May God send you help from the sanctuary. He wants to give it to you. He wants to meet with you. So friends, stop just watching somebody else grow in Christ. It's your turn. It's your turn to get into the tent, enter into the cloud, and go after the presence of God. And be like Joshua. Once you get in his presence, never leave. You know what it makes me think of? It makes me think of two things. Number one, in Psalm 91, it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This is where God wants you dwelling. He wants you living in his presence. He doesn't want you just occasionally visiting his presence. He wants you living in it. That's why Jesus said in John 15, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. But every branch in me that bears fruit, he prunes it, that it may bear more fruit. You're already clean because of the word I've given to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I'm the vine. You're the branch. Whoever abides in me, he says, bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. 
If anyone doesn't abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withers and is burned. Such branches are gathered together and thrown into the fire. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will and it'll be done for you. And then Jesus goes on to say, this is how my father's glorified, that you bear much fruit and prove to be my disciples. Abide in me. Abide in my love. This is what Jesus calls us to do. Are you abiding in him today? How, what do I mean by that? Abide in him. Remain in him. Go to the holy place. Specifically, what does that even mean? Here's what it means. It means spend time talking to God in prayer. It means spend time reading his word for yourself. It's great to hear preachers and teachers. I, I like the, the fact that people listen to these messages. I'm, I want them to do that. But you know what I want more? I want you to spend some time. Open up that holy book. Spend some time with it. Stop telling yourself you can't do it. Yes, you can. God can give you understanding. You can grab. You can grasp what's in here. Get in the word of God. Get in prayer. Talk to God about everything. Rely on God for everything. Let his word abide in you. As you abide in him. He, said, and he also said, look, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I've kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. And I love what he says in verse 11. He says, these things I'm saying to you, that my joy might be in you. And that your joy might be full. The secret to joy is abiding in a close, day-to-day, moment-by-moment relationship with Jesus himself. What a gift that we don't have to go look for a tent of meeting outside the camp. But I love how Jesus would often go into private places and pray. We're his followers, so let's do the same thing. Do you have a secret place? Do you? Just practically speaking, do you have a, a secret place <clears throat> where you can go and get away from all the distractions, get outside the camp, get outside of, the, of, of everybody else, and just be with God? That's not just for preachers and missionaries. That's for you, Christian. If you're a follower of Jesus, Jesus said, look, it's enough for the student to become like the teacher. It's enough for the servant to become like the master. He's calling you today to get away from the camp, get outside of the busyness on a regular basis and press into the camp. Don't just stand there watching somebody else do it. It's time for you to enter into the cloud. It's time for you to enter in and stay there. Live in the presence of God. Pray throughout the day. Bring your scripture with you and read it throughout the day. Another way to abide in Christ, not only prayer and scripture, but is simply loving people. You know, when I love people and I treat people with the love of Christ and I reach out to people in love, I find myself abiding in him. That's his command, that we love one another. And so another way is I, the things I do to love other people, that's a way of abiding in him. Staying close to him by doing what he does. And then there's worship. Worshiping alone, like they did at the tent. There's, some of that's good. Worshiping alone is great. But don't limit it to that. Get with the people of God and worship with them. Serve with them. Grow with them. I know sometimes you're going to have to bear with them, and they're going to have to bear with you. That's how we learn. That's how we become more Christ-like, by getting in there and ministering to each other and arguing, sometimes arguing with each other, disagreeing, agreeing, debating, discussing, loving, caring, working together, praying together, going through struggles together. You know, that's life. That's how you grow. That's how you abide in Christ. So pray. Scripture. Serve, love, worship, fellowship. These are your avenues to abiding in Jesus Christ. You know, he's calling you today. Would you just, would you just say today, Lord, uh, pray with me. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for giving me life. Now, Lord, help me abide in you today. Help me to trust you, to listen to you. Help me to read your word. Help me to talk to you. Help me to love people today. Help me to encourage people today. To minister to, to the broken today. Use me as a vessel of honor and of love. 
Keep me away from judgment of other people and help me to be an encourager and a helper. Jesus, help me today to walk with you throughout this day. And I ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. My friend, it may be that you don't have a relationship with Jesus. It comes by faith. It comes by that moment you decide to turn from your sins and put your faith in him. He died on the cross to give you eternal life. He rose from the dead to open the door to the kingdom of heaven for you. And he invites you to receive him by faith. Would you pray this prayer with me today? Lord Jesus, I need you. I believe in you. I trust that you died for me and rose again. I repent of my sins. I turn from sin. I want to follow you. Now give me power to walk with you. Fill me with your spirit. Forgive me of my sins. And show me how to follow you. My life is yours now. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray if you have questions and want to talk, send me some questions. If you got prayer needs, I'd love to hear them. Send them, message them on here. If you got questions, send me a private message or send a message here. Would love to talk to you. Listen, thank you for your time. God bless you and go in peace.